Beloved in Christ, <clears throat> the praise of the living God, our hope, our joy, and our peace. We welcome you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to another powerful half hour of God's holy and divine word. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown here at Understanding the Father's Heart Ministries. Beloved, you know a question I believe that we ought to ask ourselves if not on a daily basis, surely we should have asked ourselves this question as we journey through this life. And that is, what is my purpose? You have asked yourself of that question and began to play with it in your mind to try to find out exactly what your purpose is. You know, we have a tendency to look at other people's lives and and sometimes <clears throat> when we look at others' lives, we envy them because it seems like they have found the purpose uh, for their life. And it seems like everything have just fallen in place for them that that purpose in their life might be achieved. And we'll look at their lives and we'll say, wow, it worked just so perfectly. And then we'll look at our lives and we'll say, well, you know, I went through this journey. I went through this battle, this tribulation, and it seemed to knock me off what I really wanted to do. Beloved, life is to be lived. And whatever uh, things that we went through this life, beloved, God was there with you, especially you who are a born-again believer. You who have given your life to Christ and seek the fulfillment of God in your life, then I want you to know today that whatever journey that you have taken, God has been with you. Just as he has a plan for the entire universe one day. He has a plan to renew this earth one day. That his children might live upon it in peace and in harmony. Beloved, God has a plan. And just as he has a plan for the universe... He has a plan also for your life. That's why, beloved, we have to ask ourselves that question. What is my purpose? And our purpose should be to fulfill what God's will is and not necessarily our own. The Word of God says to us, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 16, 11. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord God, that you will reveal to those who may not know their purpose right now, Lord God, that you will speak to their heart, that you will make it very clear to them, Father, the direction that they ought to be walking in. And Lord God, for those who have stumbled, those who have fallen, Father, I pray that you will give them the strength and the eager to move forward in life and not allow a stumble or a fall to stop them. Father God, bless them in a very powerful way, Father. I thank you and I praise you, Father, for your divine word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Beloved, all of us should be seeking a renewed sense of purpose. You know, there are some things we have done in our life 
and as you get older in life, as myself, I look at life in a different uh, uh, spectrum than I once did before. Before I was looking at life as though everything was before me. Now I have a tendency to look at what I have accomplished and what I have done in this life. And beloved, knowing that each day that I make, that I'm one step closer to meeting my Savior face to face. So that should be an urgency that is now taking place in my life. One of the most dangerous things there is as we age that we begin to think somehow we still have years upon years in order to live. Beloved, the Word of God tells us life is just like a vapor. It is here today and it is gone tomorrow. So our heart should be in a place of preparation, of preparing ourselves to see the Master. Preparing ourselves for that day that we ultimately will face. Beloved, we not, should not come to that day unawares. We should not come to that day unplanned. But beloved, if we are going to live this life with a renewed sense of purpose, that purpose should be finding the center of God's will. You may have lived your life doing it the way you want to do it. You may have done a lot of things that you wanted to accomplish in life. And yet, you know inside of you that there is a void that is there because you have not in your eyes fulfilled the, God, the will of Almighty God. God understands that a plan that is thoroughly and completely is one that he knows about you. If you seek God's will earnestly and prayerfully, beloved, you then will make his plans, though he then will make his plans known to you, and he will make known to you his will. But we have to seek his plans with a commitment from our heart and with dutiful praise. Praying unto the Lord, seeking the mind of the Lord, asking the Lord, Lord, what do you have for me that I might live in your will, that I might be able to do your will? Because as long as I am doing your will, as according to your desire, desire, I will have pleasures forevermore. We are called to connect into God's will. And beloved, that is for each and every one of us. That should be a desire that is in our heart and our mind. Never. Your vision of God's purpose for your life sometimes can be clouded by a wish list that you have expected God to dutifully fulfill. Many times we have our own personal wish list that we want God to fulfill for us rather than finding out what God's will is and then fulfilling His will. And beloved, it is no better time than now than to find 
the center of God's will for your life. Because, beloved, when you find that, then there's a renewed purpose in your life like never before. The things that you long for, the things that you crave for, no longer will have a hold on your life. Because now you are looking in a totally different direction. You're looking upward to fulfill God's will rather than to fulfill the lust of your flesh. But rather now you're seeking His holy and divine will. And many people in this life, beloved, believers who have not fulfilled God's will in their lives because they have not truly sought it with prayer, with commitment, but rather they have settled for their own will. And I want to say to you today that there is no better time than right now than to say to yourself, I want God's will for my life. I no longer want my will. I don't desire my will any longer because it doesn't bring me fulfillment. That new car didn't bring fulfillment. That new house didn't bring fulfillment. The birth of a child did not bring fulfillment. That new marriage didn't bring fulfillment. Beloved, we can find fulfillment only one place, and that is in Christ. That is living for God and walking in His holy and divine will. Does that mean that you don't have now any time for your life or the things that you desire to do? Beloved, that does not mean it at all. Because when you are fulfilling God's will, actually, God gives you even more time to do some of the things that you want to do. Amen? I like the analogy that uh, the philosopher Geth used. And it is, it's not doing the things we like to do, but liking the things we have to do that makes life blessed. Amen? Let me say it again. It's not doing the things we like to do, but liking the things that we have to do that makes life blessed. Yes, beloved. You know, there are some things in this life that we have to do, that we have to fulfill. And we ask God to help us in order to fulfill those things that we should do in this life. But beloved, we should like it and thank God for it that He has given us the strength and the ability to be able to fulfill those things because that alone makes life a blessing when it could be a curse to us. But beloved, it is how we view it, it is how we see it, that determines how we uh, sense what is going on at the time. Some people look at everything with a sense of fear. Some people look at Everything with a sense of faith. Beloved, the one that looks at it with a sense of faith will always be the one that is full of joy and full of peace that surpasses all understanding because he is trusting in a God that cannot fail. He is trusting in a God that will always be there for him and said that he would be there for him. And beloved, he actually believes that. Many times we fervently hope, get this beloved, 
that God would create a world that unfolds according to our wishes and not His. We wish that God would create a world that would fulfill our wishes rather than His. Amen? But beloved, we live in a world that God's will must be carried out. You know, when Jesus was about to head to the cross, he was praying. And the Word of God says that he prayed with such fervency that his tears, his sweat, came out like blood because he was praying for God's will. And he asked God if this cup could pass from me. And immediately he answered his own question. And that was, not my will, but thy will be done. And when he was in the center of the Father's will, he knew that he had a future of the cross that awaited him. Beloved, it is not always easy. It is not always simple to fulfill God's will. But it is the only direction and only way that you and I are going to have a renewed purpose in our lives. Each day, we ask the Lord, what is your will? Each day, we cry out to our God, what would you have me do today? And beloved, we ask that with sincerity. We ask that with a heart that is turned to Almighty God. Father, I want your purpose. Yes, I may bear my cross today. But I know as I bear that cross, you are with me. You're not going to leave me. You're not going to forsake me. You are going to be with me just as you was with Jesus on the road. To Golgotha, you are going to be with me. And beloved, you can trust that. You can believe that. That is the truth. That your God would never leave you, nor would he ever forsake you. And when we try to do things and fulfill our own way, we experience more disappointments than frustrations and heartaches when we choose to fulfill our will it becomes even more difficult to live this life. When we pull a Jonah and inside, decide to go another way, when God has placed us somewhere or sent us somewhere, we find ourselves in the belly of our heartaches, our pains, our faithlessness, our disappointments. 
they all began to fall upon us. And then we ask ourselves the question, why am I so depressed? Why am I so down and out today? What did I do to deserve this? Running away from God's will. That's what place you there. Doing it your way. Seeking your will. Seeking your purpose in life. Trying to fulfill the lust of your flesh. Is what has brought you to that place of deep depression. We can't deny that. Beloved. We know what the Word says. Look what it says. Look what the Psalm says again. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That doesn't sound like depression. That doesn't sound like heartaches. That doesn't sound like despair. Beloved, did you hear what I just read? You will show me the path of life. God, you show me the path of life. You show me how to walk that path. I know you are with me when I'm walking that path. But when we decide we're going to do our own will, God does not forsake us, nor does He leave us, but He allows us to go down the path that we chose. He doesn't stop us. He may put warning signs up, but beloved, it is still our choice. If we're going to go forward or not, the Lord put up many signs in our lives to show us the right way when we decide to go the wrong way and to do it ourselves and our own will. You know, it reminds me of a, this a particular politician uh, that was heading home late one night and he wanted to get home earlier uh, than, uh, uh, um, I, I guess he was just wanted to get home. So there was a sign, and he had passed by there many times. Uh, and, you know, the sign of the road was being worked on. But he had passed by there many times, and he saw that it looked like the road was completed. But you know how after the road is done by the construction workers, sometimes it, it, they'll, it'll be a month before they actually open it. Uh, even though the road is completed. So he decided, well, you know, the, um, to go down that road and to bypass uh, the warning uh, um, a barrier and went around it. And he was driving and everything was going fine. So he picked up the speed and said, wow, I'm, I'm on my way home. And uh, he got up to the, actually go up to the speed limit, uh, doing 45, maybe 55 miles an hour. Uh, down this road that seemingly that was complete. Well, one thing he didn't realize, it was late at night and there was a section of the road that had been taken out. A small section. And when he, when, and he didn't realize it. And when he hit it, he almost broke his neck and literally totaled out his car. Beloved, because why? Because he didn't take heed to the warning sign which said, stop, detour, go back in the direction that he should have went. And beloved, that's what happens to us sometimes. We go down the wrong path and the Lord puts signs up and we find ourselves getting into trouble because we decided to do it our own way. Beloved, the Lord God desired to fulfill our plans. He desired to renew our sense of purpose. 
But beloved, as the word says, your presence is the fullness of my joy. When we decide to go down the wrong path, the Lord is there with us, but his presence isn't there. He knows what we're doing, and he's not going to uh, uh, stop you if you decide you want to go the other way. Beloved, but ultimately, something will. Just as it did with that particular politician uh, that night that he decided to take the road that he thought was complete. Beloved, it is up to you and I to seek out a renewed sense of purpose in our lives. And if we do that, let me tell you what, beloved. There is no blessed, better place or blessed place to be than to be at the center of God's holy and divine will. Because there, there is joy, there is peace. He may bring you to the wilderness. He may bring you all the way around. But beloved, he knows how to get you to that promised land, that fruitful land that he has promised for you in this life and the life to come. Beloved, I pray that the Lord has blessed you in a very powerful way. We thank you, as always, uh, for joining us. You know, you can contact us at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana. And we pray that you will do that. And also, you can uh, see us at YouTube, uh, Evangelist J Joseph A. Brown on YouTube and also on uh, Facebook. And our number that you can contact us with is 337-278-8205. Beloved, may the Lord continue to bless you. May He continue to give you a renewed purpose for life. Because, yes, there are so many things that's going around us right now uh, that we ask ourselves, uh, what is happening next? Beloved, I don't have the slightest idea, and I don't think those who claim that they know, know what's going on. But, beloved, what we do know is that when we look outside and we look at all that is going on, the Word of God tells us to do what? Rejoice, for redemption draw it nigh. Beloved, be blessed in the Lord this day, in Jesus' name.